live, coast to coast, from the world famous convention center in Atlantic City, it's the 75th annual Miss America pageant. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating tonight's special diamond anniversary of the Miss America pageant, please welcome the stars of Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, Kathy Lee Gifford and Regis Philbin. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, we're back for the big one, 75 years. Happy, happy anniversary, everybody. We're broadcasting live tonight from coast to coast for the very first time. That's right. Tonight, everybody's watching the pageant together. In fact, if you live in Alaska, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Out of Hawaii, it's 3 o'clock. So come on, get out of the surf. We're on. At 75, the Miss America pageant still holds her own title as the world's greatest resource for women's scholarships. That's a fact. And to celebrate, we're counting down to this year's competition with great footage of previous pageants all the way back to the 1920s. Wait till you see how times have changed. And we've got another wonderful anniversary gift. 40 former Miss Americas are returning to this stage tonight, including one of the very first winners, Miss America 1933. What a reunion we have in store. And to celebrate, we've invited our very special guest star to honor our Miss Americas in song, the one and only Johnny Mathis. Yes, Kathy, so many wonderful surprises tonight, including a look at Miss America controversies. But to start the clock on this historic anniversary countdown, let's take a look at how the pageant began and how she's grown over 75 memorable years. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Why is September different than all the other months? Right, because it's Miss America's pageant. Competitors in the Atlantic City beauty pageant make a lovely bouquet, which is just as mesmerizing when broken up into individual blossoms. Do you like Bermuda shorts on men? I'm very sorry, gentlemen, but I do not. They get prettier and younger every year. Welcome to the most colorful Miss America pageant ever. See what I mean about variety?
Yes, indeed, those were the days, and there'll be more great clips as we count down to tonight's competition. You know, putting on a pageant in Atlantic City did keep the tourists coming, but the minute those first Miss America bathing beauties appeared in swimsuits, a heated controversy began. And it hasn't let up for 75 years. Right. You see, back in the 20s, you weren't even allowed on the boardwalk in bathing attire, as they quaintly called it back then. And if you dared to do it, you got arrested, buddy. It was those first Miss America contestants parading down the boardwalk in swimsuits who started people talking. And to help calm the critics, Atlantic City police finally had to put on swimsuits themselves. But somehow the controversy over swimsuits would not go away. And the debate rages on. Some say if this is truly a scholastic program, what do swimsuits have to do with it? Huh? Okay. Others say eliminate the swimsuits and you wouldn't have a Miss America pageant. That makes sense too. <laughs> I think we know how they feel. All right. The point is this. Everybody's got an opinion about this. So here's the deal. The loyalty of the American public is one of the big reasons this pageant has been so successful over the years. You've invested your time and interest in the pageant, and so tonight you, our Miss America viewers, will tell us what to do. Should we or shouldn't we keep the swimsuit competition as part of tonight's pageant? As you have no doubt heard by now, the Miss America organization is putting the swimsuit controversy to a national phone-in vote. It's time to stop betting, folks. What? Put betting. That's Put 50 cents together for a call and make your voice heard tonight. Talk about interactive TV. This is it. Miss America's phone lines are about to open, so let's go to the phone center in Omaha, Nebraska, and meet our Miss America correspondent, Steve Kometko. Steve, tell our viewers how easy it is to vote. All right, Kathy Lee and Regis, welcome to the phone center in Omaha, Nebraska, where we are expecting what should be the largest interactive vote in television history. That's right. In just a few moments, our 900 number is going to open from coast to coast, including Alaska and Hawaii, which I guess means we're coast to coast to coast to coast since they have their own coast. Voting is very, very simple, so listen up. If you want to keep the swimsuit competition as a part of the pageant, you want to vote yes. You do so by dialing 1-900-268-2200. If you want to see the swimsuit competition eliminated, you want to vote no by dialing 1-900-268-2300. Those are the numbers. It's that simple. And uh, as a matter of fact, we want to make certain you know, for one thing, it's 50 cents a call. Each call counts as one vote. And if you're under 18, we don't want to get any parents angry with us. Please ask permission before you call us. Also, we'd like you to know that each call, uh, after the phone bill is paid tonight, the remaining proceeds are going to go to charity, so that's another reason to give us a, a call this evening. Now, this is the point at which I was supposed to press a button and say the phone lines are officially open. However, this place is so automated that a computer pushes the button. However, I still get to say the phone lines are now officially open. So, take a little time to think about it, talk it over with a little man, talk it over with a little woman, give us a phone call, let us know your opinion. We want to hear from you, America. Kathy Lee and Regis. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. We'll be checking back with Steve at the phone center throughout the show, so don't forget to vote. I should tonight's Miss America swimsuit competition be kept or should it be eliminated? We've had some television stars out in Hollywood who had this to say. I would keep the swimsuit competition because I think it's important for these girls to look fit. I think that's part of the package. I feel that anything that, that even hints at uh, that beauty is the only uh, mark of uh, excellence in our culture is, is a danger. I would eliminate the swimsuit competition completely because I don't think people want to see it. I think that the criticism to it is a little bit misdirected because for me, the feminist movement was all about choice. The women in this pageant have actively chosen to participate knowing that the swimsuit competition is an integral part of it. NBC's presentation is a presidential election year. If a qualified woman were running for president, how would you feel about voting for her and why? If the men candidates running were qualified, I feel I would vote against her. My reason being that women are very high-strung and emotional people. They aren't reliable enough when it comes to to making a decision, a snap decision.
What a genuine thrill it is to welcome back so many former Miss Americas to this legendary stage here in Atlantic City. They pursued the dream, they won the crown, and they all agree, participating in this pageant has changed and enriched their lives forever. The 40 Miss Americas whom we honor tonight span 61 remarkable years, from Miss America 1933 to Miss America 1995. Honoring these wonderful women tonight and helping celebrate their reunion is an extraordinary singer whose talent has touched so many hearts. In fact, that satin voice of his has uh, helped start love affairs all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is synonymous with romance, elegance, style, and special occasions like this. Mr. Johnny Mathis. Like a dance or a show Summer content With an evening spent At home By the radio Some like to live For the moment Some like to just reminisce but whenever I have an evening to spend, just give me one like this. This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Can't think of anything. I'd rather do This is a lovely way To spend an evening And think of anyone As lovely as you But in that hush of night, exactly like a bittersweet refrain, comes that certain smile to haunt your Spend 
Everybody, that was unforgettable, Johnny. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies. Yeah, welcome, welcome back, back to Atlantic City. All right, Kathy, it's time to check in now with Steve Kometko at Home Center in Omaha. Let's see what's happening with the swim to boat. How's it going, Steve? Pretty good, Regis. Uh the phone numbers are on your screen right now. If you want to keep the swimsuit competition, vote yes. If you want to eliminate it, vote no. So far. You can see on our monitor here, total call, 77,000. We haven't had the phone lines open that much. And, let's see, it's updating as we go. 65,000 in favor, 12,000 say no. So we'll, we'll, no votes are, are 17%. So, um, we're gonna, it's too early to call a trend, I suppose, besides we don't want to influence the voters before the polls close, shall we say. But uh, we're going to be here taking your phone calls. Remember, it's 50 cents a call, and if you're under 18, please ask permission from your parents first. We want to hear from you, America. Kathy Lee and Regis, back to you at Convention Center. All right, Steve, thank you so much. Now, because this vote has created so much news, weeks ago our producers decided to test the waters to see what you, the American public, thought about the swimsuit issue. So they sent a crew across country, and here, adding to the controversy, are some of your thoughts. I think we should keep the swimsuit competition in. It's Miss America. She's supposed to be pretty. She's also supposed to be intelligent. That's why we have the questions. But I think the swimsuit competition is a major part of it. There's not a reason to take it out. Keep it! They should eliminate it. You know, it should be more just on the evening gown and the personality. It concentrates on the body instead of the personality and what these people bring to the community and the society. Watching the 75th anniversary of the Miss America pageant. Thanks for celebrating with us. How long did I take Tylenol? Following up on last year's new tradition, before heading to the pageant, over 50, oh, allow all of our 50 contestants met each other for the first time at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And what fun they had, Rachel, though I know you wish you had been with them. The perfect place for our contestants yeah. to get acquainted before heading Oceanside to the exciting sights and sounds of Atlantic City, home of the Miss America pageant. I think that makes all the difference. I gotta ride this ride. What's your idea of an ideal man? 
Well, actually, I already have a boyfriend, and he is my ideal man. My ideal man has to know that I'm an independent woman and be okay with that. And he also has to have a decent job with a paycheck. <laughs> a job is required. Yes. A job is required, girlfriend. <laughs> Thing I'm excited about is my birthday. It's September 16th, final night of competition. Mine's the 15th. <laughs> they need a double crown. Yeah. Have a big party. I think a woman today can do whatever she wants. I think she can balance both a career and raise a family. Today, I think it's not really a choice. You know, women have to work and raise their kids at the same time. They better have the swimsuit competition this year. I hope so too. I'm in the minority. Oh no. <laughs> Hollers tradition, but Miss America has a bigger tradition of supporting women, and I think we can do something different moving into the 90s. At least they're letting the country decide. I mean, that's going to be something really neat to watch. But has anybody out. seen the swimsuit? I mean, if you've seen the swimsuit, <laughs> if there's a girdle, it is a Keller girdle. I'm so glad that they brought us to Walt Disney World first because first class treatment all the way. Thank you, Disney World. Then in a flash, it was on to the non-stop fun and activities of that world-famous boardwalk in Atlantic City. Everybody admired a special anniversary fan sculpture honoring 75 years of Miss America pageantry. There was time to sample dozens of glittering night spots and restaurants. And to enjoy the thrills of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. We don't do a lot of kayaking. We got farm girls in Ohio. Well, I'd always seen pictures of what the Miss America pageant was like. I'd watched it since I was a little girl. But that, I don't think, does it just. When we came into convention center the first day, a lot of the girls were all choked up and their eyes were filled with tears. Because I think it's every girl's dream to come to Miss America. When I say my prayers at night, I just kind of thank God for allowing a little girl to come through. Back at Convention Center, Hollywood makeup artist Gloria Levinson offered expert makeup advice, along with a hair clinic featuring tips by Clairol consultants Richard Dalton and Lenny LaCour. There were countless moments of getting those costume details just right. The person that has influenced me the most is definitely my grandfather. He passed away about four years ago, and he taught me so much about dedication, and if there's something in this life that you want, and you work hard enough for it, you are going to be a success, and that's the reason why I'm here. I think Atlantic City is just the perfect place, and it's been such a tradition over the years. I would hate to leave. Then they met the preliminary judges, Miss America 1975, Shirley Catherine Barrett. Miss America 1957, Marion McKnight Conway. Manager, Consolidated Edison, New York City, Herman Dorsey, Jr. L.A. Master, Pennsylvania Ballet, Jeffrey Gribbler. Broadway musical director, Carl German. Miss America 1983, Deborah Sue Maffet Wilson. Miss America 1968, Deborah Barnes Miles. Well, we're all done with our interviews. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you all call your families and tell them everything that they asked you? I can't believe it starts tomorrow night. At a special breakfast hosted by Waterford Crystal, contestants said hello to Leonard Horn, CEO of the Miss America Pageant Organization, and Emmy Award winning TV producer director Jeff Margolin. A special day of community service with AmeriCorps brought Miss America into the lives of Atlantic City's children. Look what she wrote. What? Miss Connecticut, the whole world loves you. Oh, oh that's sweet. And once again, the boardwalk lit up as thousands enjoyed a special 75th anniversary Miss America parade, all wrapping up a never-to-be-forgotten week in fabulous Atlantic City. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're coming to you live, coast to coast, from the Convention Center in Atlantic City. And Kathy, we've got a fascinating look at Miss America controversies ahead, but now it's time to check in on tonight's national phone and vote. Steve Kometko, we're all intrigued. How's that controversy shaping up where you are? Well, I'll hope to live up to the level of your intrigue, Mr. Uh, Philbin. Uh, so far, uh, we're getting a lot of calls here, tens of thousands from all over the country. Uh, as expected, we're hearing from uh, the large cities, but we're also hearing from America's rural areas as well. Now, let's see if I can remember this correctly. There are 11,000 phone lines here at the phone center devoted to tonight's call-in, and they can take in more than 6 million calls an hour. 
pretty impressive, huh? All right, now we're going to check in with uh, Kelly Miles. She's with the accounting firm of Ernst & Young, LLP. She's in charge of, uh, well, at least you're the representative for the company tonight. How many calls have we received so far? Over 200,000, Steve. And that's in just about half an hour. You have an hour left to register your vote. Remember, once again, yes means let's keep the swimsuit competition. No means let's eliminate it. Think about it. Listen to some of our man-on-the-street opinions. Hear what our stars out Hollywood way have to say. And uh, then pick up the phone and catch your vote. But right now, via satellite, it's back to the convention center. Uh, thanks so much, Steve. Kathy Lee and I want you all to know that during the five years that we've hosted the Miss America pageant, we've not only had great fun, but seeing so many young women achieve their dreams has been a real privilege. And the hosts have changed over the years. Actor Ron Ely was MC back in 1980 and 81. Then Gary Collins hosted with his wife, former Miss America Mary Ann Mobley. Then again with former Miss America Phyllis George. And also a couple of years with You Know Who. And now there's us. Well, thanks for remembering. <laughs> but the master of ceremonies who we remember so fondly and to whom we all owe a debt of gratitude was that wise court jester and gentle humanitarian, Bert Parks. Here in Atlantic City, the talent competition is about to begin. It's a great pleasure to introduce the master of ceremonies for this Miss America pageant, Bert Parks. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you. If you're young at heart, you feel relaxed. Oh, very relaxed. I feel terrible. <laughs> For it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind. If you're young at heart, I've delivered many a winner and never lost a passion. Yet if you should survive to a hundred What the heck is a plural of Miz? Look at all of you to run. You'll have to work on that. Just Miss like or Miz. How do you in the great? Now, here is the best part. You have a head start if you are amongst the very young that are. She is Miss Sally Miller, and she will, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're a little late, so good night, folks. We're a little late, so good night, folks. <laughs> good night, all. I'll see you. I sound a little bit like a broken record. I'm going to bite their noses off. How do you like that? They have all the wrong names here. See, this is swell. But anyway, I'm going to give it to them anyway. I don't care. I got scholarships I ain't used yet, you know. And if you should survive to a hundred and five... We're honored to present you with this plaque here to commemorate your 25th year in the pageant. I want to tell you something, my friend. It's a great honor, too, to receive an award. But the real honor, and this I mean from my heart, has been sharing this pageant with you, the people. You, the people in the television audience, I thank you. You are the reason why I'm here. I guess I would keep the swimsuit competition in the Miss America pageant just because it's tradition. I'm proud to say I'm a heterosexual American male. I like ladies in swimsuits, period. I would keep the swimsuit competition because I think everyone should have to wear a swimsuit while they watch it. Whether or not the Miss America pageant pursues this course, there will always be girls in bikinis on Baywatch. <laughs> to the thousands of Miss America volunteers, local, state, and nationwide, thank you and happy anniversary. Can you tell us about it? Yes, Miss California and I have been dating the same cadet. <laughs> what is the solution to this problem? Well, I don't know, but I think he has two very lovely ex-girlfriends. <laughs> The Charleston, the swing, the Watusi. Even the words give you a pretty good workout. The dances and the songs we loved are a great way to review 75 years of Miss America history. And saluting those memorable years here for the first time on stage tonight, our 50 contestants, followed by Miss America Heather Whitestone. 
Heather will dance to Elton John's Academy Award winning hit, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, a special anniversary gift, Dancing Through the Decade.
You're watching the special countdown to the 75th Miss America pageant. Tonight, America, you tell us what to do about the swimsuit competition. A yes vote tells us to keep the competition. Tonight, a no vote tells us to eliminate tonight's competition altogether. Listen now to what some of you are thinking. I don't like the swimsuit competition. I think it's, I think it's sexist, basically. I enjoy the swimsuit competition, and if she is the ideal American woman, why can't she look good in a swimsuit and be intelligent all in one? I think it's degrading to women. It makes them appear as objects, and in this day and age, women are getting more opportunities and more, more, more to get more jobs and be better in society. It brings them back down to where they used to be. Here she comes, Miss America. Miss America. We are so proud of the Miss America Scholarship Program, helping American women achieve their dreams. Do you think it is important that the United States reaches the moon. I don't feel that we are ever going to reach the moon because we were born here and I feel this is where we are today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Protests, resignations, mysterious disappearances. Just a few of the controversial sparks that have kept the Miss America pageant making headlines for 75 years. In early pageants, contestants, well, they sometimes, they fudged the facts, yeah. Judges found that an early Miss Boston was not only Mary Breach, they later discovered she had a three-month-old baby, but he wasn't named Cody. I knew she'd get that name in somewhere. <laughs> but what about those creative television executives who envisioned the pageant as a spectacular ice show? Think about it. I could be doing this with Tonya Harding. Why not? Where is she when I need her? Watch out what you wish for, you may get it. But lucky for us, the pageant has not only survived its controversies, but more often than not, it has changed and it has matured because of them. Exactly. Now, here's a look at some of those infamous moments that put Miss America on the front page. In 1937, Atlantic City woke to a Miss America mystery. The disappearance of 17-year-old winner Betty Cooper. Betty, along with her handsome pageant escort, could not be found. It was later revealed that the faithful chaperone was helping Betty to hide because she wanted to stay in school. The abandoned crown went to a very surprised Alice Emmerich, Miss Texas. The press packed up their cameras and stomped out of Convention Center in 1948 when they learned that Miss America would no longer be crowned in a swimsuit. But they changed their mind when Minnesota's lovely BB Stop won the title. The first Miss America to be crowned in an evening gown. Miss Minnesota, it gives me great pleasure to crown you Miss America, and I know you'll be a grand one. Thank you, Venator. I'm so happy. When the family of Miss America winner Marilyn Vanderbilt came up on stage in 1958, the proud and happy gathering looked picture perfect. 34 years later, Marilyn bravely revealed her terrible secret, that since the age of five, she had been sexually abused by her father. Today, Marilyn continues her campaign against similar child abuse. Controversies of those early decades paled, however, when compared to the pageants of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. In 1968, a group calling themselves the Women's Liberation Front crashed Convention Center. I will make way for Miss America 1969 to search for her special someday. Earlier, they disrupted the boardwalk, tossing bras, girdles, and hair curlers into trash cans, shouting, freedom. 20 years have gone by since my first Miss America pageant. And I want to tell you that these girls do not look a day older. Even gentle Bert Parks made headlines. Audiences who had spent 25 years enjoying Bert as the pageant's master of ceremonies were outraged at his dismissal in 1980. But no one was more surprised than Bert who unfortunately learned about his pink slip by chance through a reporter before he was officially notified. Shortly after she was crowned in 1992, Carolyn Sapp blew the lid off domestic violence in America as she shared her terrifying story of sexual and physical abuse by an out-of-control ex-boyfriend. Her crusade against personal violence continues. But no one reached the heights of controversy more than Vanessa Williams, Miss America 1984. 
talented and much loved that Vanessa gave up her crown when it was revealed that pictures she had posed for in the past were purchased and will be published by Penthouse Magazine. Runner-up Suzette Charles, who became the nation's second Black Miss America, accepted the title for the remaining 54 days, gracefully navigating troubled waters to proudly wear that coveted and sometimes controversial crown. All right, let's check in with Omaha, Nebraska. Steve, I'm not too good at the suspense thing. Tell us what's happening with the vote. How are we doing? You're going to have to bite your nails in the, for the time being, Regis, because I'm not going to reveal the breakdown just yet, but I can tell you this. There were 3 million phone attempts in the first 13 minutes that the phone lines were open. Now, I know I told you earlier that this equipment could take more than 6 million calls an hour. Just not all at one time, okay? So keep trying if you're getting a busy signal. So far, more than 500,000 people have gotten through, and I understand some of you are calling the convention center in Atlantic City to say you've gotten a busy signal. Uh -uh. Call here. Yes, if you want to keep the swimsuit competition, 1-900-268-2200. No, if you want to see the swimsuit competition eliminated, 1-900-268-2300. You have about 45 minutes left. This is uh, truly interactive TV because your vote will tell the producers whether or not to stage the swimsuit competition tonight. I don't think it's ever been done on this scale before, so we'll have to see what happens, how it comes out. Regis and Kathy Lee, what's happening at the convention center? Well, Steve, we're uh, backstage at the convention center, wrapping up our countdown minutes away from the start of tonight's big 75th anniversary Miss America pageant. Believe me, it's always very exciting back here. a little nervous, here. Regis. So am I. <laughs> our contestants are getting ready for the parade of states and nervously awaiting the dream of a lifetime, the possibility of becoming the next Miss America. But before we crown Miss America 1996, yes, yes. what about history? What, what about, about making it, history Reed? yourself as we announce your decision about tonight's exciting national swimsuit vote later on during the pageant? Reed, just by my countdown clock, it is uh, time to put on our party clothes. That is, if you brought party clothes. Did you bring party, party clothes? clothes? <laughs> One more remark, and I just may put on my tails. You'll have to come back and see what Elegant is all about. And you too, Miss. This I gotta see. Remember, the phone lines are open for just another 30 minutes. So call in and vote. And we'll see you when we come back with the start of this year's exciting competition. <laughs> and more updates on our continuing swimsuit vote. I'll get him in a swimsuit. NBC's presentation of the 75th Annual Miss America pageant is being sponsored in part tonight live from coast to coast a spectacular diamond jubilee celebration as the 75th anniversary miss america pageant continues from atlantic city ladies and gentlemen please welcome this year's 50 miss america contestants Thank you. 
Whitaky, Miss Florida, Stetson University. Rachel English, Miss Georgia, the University of Georgia. Tracy Taguchi, Miss Hawaii, Chaminade University. Brooke Brown, Miss Idaho, Boise State University. Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois, Wheaton College. Rebecca Gray, Miss Indiana, Indiana University Medical Center. Jennifer Curry, Miss Iowa, Cornell College. Amy Kaler, Miss Kansas, Wichita State University.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the host of the 75th anniversary Miss America pageant, the stars of Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, Kathy Lee Gifford and Regis Philbin. Well, thank you very much. See, I told you, white tie and tails, right out of my fair lady. Absolutely. Right. You do look elegant, Reed, and that is uh, yet another Miss America first. Easy, easy. Well, if you've missed some of tonight's special celebration, the best is yet to come. And once again, to all of our viewers, a big welcome to the 75th anniversary celebration of the Miss America pageant. By the way, to the millions of people watching tonight, we thank you for being such loyal Miss America viewers over all these years. You know, Kathy Lee, we've got such excitement going on here tonight. In the last hour, people across America began voting the, the keep or eliminate the swimsuit competition for tonight's 75th anniversary contest. Phone lines are still open, so let's go out to Steve Kometko at the phone center in Omaha for a report. Steve, how are we doing? We're doing pretty well, Regis. Gee, you two look great. Thank you, You look great yourself. Thanks. Now you look smashing. I thought you looked great before. Now you look merely smashing. Anyway, let's get to this. We've had 649,000 votes so far. There's about 20 minutes left to go in the voting. Uh, America is really responding to this controversy. And I want to tell you once again that if you've tried calling and gotten a busy signal, try again. That's what that little button on the phone that says redial is for. Because you won't be charged for the call, 50 cents each call. You won't be charged unless you actually connect. So we're not going to tell you just yet how it's going. We will tell you that you want to keep the phone uh, keep the phone competition keep the swimsuit competition you want to vote yes that's 1-900-268-2200 and if you want to see it eliminated tonight it's no 1-900-268-2300 somebody get that it might be the phone anyway we're going to be here for about 20 minutes longer phones will be open that much longer give us a call be a part of history it's your civic duty back to you in atlantic city Okay, thanks so much, Steve. When we return, we'll be announcing tonight's top 10 semifinalists. There are lots of anniversary surprises ahead, so don't go away. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're broadcasting live from coast to coast, about to start the competition on this year's special anniversary edition of the 75th Miss America pageant. Before we announce our 10 semifinalists once again, our phone numbers are on the screen. A reminder that tonight's swimsuit competition is up to you. Our 900 lines will close in approximately 30 minutes, only 50 cents to help make history. So get to the phone and vote. Earlier this week, <laughs> all 50 contestants completed three days of tough preliminary competition and at the conclusion each was given a composite score. Now if America decides to keep the swimsuit competition, tonight's judges will score just as they did last year. To the preliminary score of 40%, they'll add 20% for tonight's talent competition, 15% for physical fitness in a swimsuit, another 15% for evening wear, then 10% for final interview, and that totals 100%. The contestant with the highest score wins a $40,000 scholarship and the title Miss America. All right, but if America votes to eliminate the swimsuit competition, here's how our accountant will adjust the judge's score. Talent becomes 25%. Evening wear becomes 25%. And again, 10% goes to the final interview. Those scores, along with the preliminary score, also add up to 100%. All scores tonight will be tabulated by the national accounting firm of Ernst & Young, LLP. I love those guys. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've met each of our 50 contestants. And now, let's reveal the names of our top 10 semifinalists. Yeah. One of whom, later this evening, will never forget this 75th anniversary celebration as she becomes the new Miss America. May we have the envelope, please? Thank you very much. Okay, attention. Thank you very much. And the 1996 Miss America semifinalists are in random order. Not making it easy. 
Chantel Smith, Miss Oklahoma. Amy Keller, Miss Kansas. Marcia Turner, Miss Massachusetts. Helen Goldsby, Miss New York. Monica Lawrence, Miss Mississippi. Tiffany Stoker, Miss California. Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois. And finally, Paula Montgomery, Miss Arkansas. That would be one that was warm and sincere, gentle, but yet extremely firm with me, because I need someone that's firm. Thank you very much, Miss Taylor. Happy 75th anniversary, Miss America. Thank you, everybody. It's time now to meet the men and women who have the important task and great responsibility of seeking and selecting the next Miss America. Please hold on to your applause, everybody, until we finish welcoming all of tonight's judges. After gracing the cover of 30 fashion magazines, she's made a successful career transition to film and TV. Currently starring as Hope Brady on NBC's Days of Our Lives, Christian Alfonso. He made his Broadway debut in David Merrick's Carnival and received a Tony for his starring role in Promises, Promises, currently appearing on the hit TV series, Law and Order, Jerry Orbach. Best-selling author, motivational speaker, and star of infomercials, she's reached millions with her positive messages about love, happiness, and a meaningful life. Barbara DeAngelis. A graduate of Sarah Lawrence College, she first appeared on television's 21 Jump Street. Today, her comic versatility shines as Vanessa, on TV hit series, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Holly Robinson Pete. The youngest editor ever for American Vogue, she now designs under her own label for Hollywood's top leading ladies, Olympic ice champions, and gowns for that bride to be next door, Vera Wang. Sports commentator and entrepreneur, he captured the world when he broke Olympic records at the 1976 Games in Montreal. One of the world's greatest athletes, Bruce Jenner. Spokesperson, author, fitness buff, and fashion authority. Today she helps run Polo Ralph Lauren with her husband in Toronto, Canada, Miss America 1979, Kylene Barker Hibbert. Our Miss America contestants join Johnny Mathis in tonight's first competition and our 10 semifinalists follow as they move down the Miss America runway competing in evening wear. Are we 
really happy here with this lonely game we play. Looking for words to say. Searching but not finding understanding anywhere. Both afraid to say we're just too far away From being close together from the start We tried to talk This lonely game we play Thoughts of weeping disappear Every time I see your eyes No matter how hard I try To understand the reasons that we Carry on this way We're lost In a masquerade Mississippi. Stop 
Walker, Miss California. Everybody, when was the last time you had a totally organic experience? Well, it's time to try Clairol's new herbal essence. Her year of service is coming to an end tonight. But for Heather Whitestone, Miss America 1995, what a year this has been. Really has. The fact that Heather is profoundly deaf has only encouraged her to believe that even with a disability, anything is possible. We've been uplifted by her wisdom and positive attitude. We've been touched by her warmth and courage and special grace. We all love this lady. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss America 1995, Heather Whitestone. no matter how great. My deafness is just part of my life. And of course, I became a, a greater role model for the deaf community. And I'm very proud to represent the deaf, but I also am so excited to represent everyone in our country.
Heather, you've been a wonderful uh, Miss America. Everybody loves you, and you'll be inspiring us for a long time to come. What are your plans for the future, Heather? Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? because I gave so many people hope and encouragement this year, and I will be on board of director and an officer of the Hella Kelly I Research Foundation, which is a worldwide organization. And uh, my national speaker tour for my platform started tomorrow. You and get I, no rest at all? Yes, I'm booked a tour forever, probably. Don't call, she's booked. <laughs> and then I have some ballet performance, and I'm very excited. And, and I have a chance to, like, to fly F-16 Air Force. And more excitingly, I will be part of this soccer Olympic opening ceremony from Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. And you're going to be taking a little cruise with Sandy Patty. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I would be on a cruise with Sandy Patty. And she was a, a famous, I mean, she's a famous Christian for my talent competition. So we're going on a cruise together for the ministry. Boy, I hate to miss a good cruise. <laughs> we love you, Heather. You have been a brilliant and, and just inspirational Miss America. Hasn't she, everybody? Thank you, Heather. One of the most memorable experiences of Heather's year was a visit to the White House. Thanks to continued support of former Miss America Phyllis George and her close and longtime friendship with our nation's first lady, Phyllis graciously set in motion a historic Miss America moment as Heather presented First Lady Hillary Clinton with the coveted Woman of Achievement Award. the 1995 Women of Achievement Award. Helping others help themselves has been a strong and steady God post in our first lady's life. Your devotion, Mr. Clinton, is a light and inspiration to the Miss America organization. For your belief and participation in the gift of community service, the 1995 Women of Achievement is presented in your honor a tribute that includes a generous grant from the Miss America organization for the cause of your choice and this beautiful sculpture by Waterford Crystal. Thank you so much, Heather. I am pleased to be the recipient of this award because I think it does represent achievement for women to honor other women and I am particularly proud of that. I also am grateful that with it comes a contribution to charity because the contributions that the Miss America organization have made over time have really enabled many people, as Heather was saying, to fulfill their own God-given potential. I don't know that many Americans even know that the Miss America organization is now the single largest provider of scholarships to women in the entire world. And as many of you know, I am a firm believer in education for women and girls to equip them with the tools that they need in their own lives to make the choices that are right for them. And for all of that, I thank you and I appreciate greatly this honor. Thank you all very much. You're live with us in Atlantic City on NBC, celebrating 75 wonderful years of Miss America. Seventy fifth anniversary. Boy, you're still looking good. Welcome back, everybody, to the seventy fifth anniversary celebration of the Miss America pageant. Well, we're going right now to the phone center for a last report on tonight's national phone in vote. Steve. Actually, the second to the last. I guess the next time we see you after this one will be the last when we actually give you the results. There's been a last-minute rush of votes, I'm happy to report, however. As we said earlier, our 900 lines would be open for approximately 90 minutes, and we're almost there. 50 cents a call. If you're under 18, you need to ask for your parents' permission. Please. 
Uh, by our count so far, we've received a total of 898,000 votes, and the computers are finishing the tabulation even as we speak. I had planned on registering my own vote, but I've been unable to get a dial tone. So, nevertheless, it doesn't matter anyway, because as of right now, I'm told, the phone lines are closed. Thanks very much for your vote. Kathy Lee and Regis, our accounting firm, will now uh, register the total votes that are being tabulated by our computer. And next time we speak, we'll reveal the results. Okay. All right, Steve. Steve. Nearly a, a million votes so far. You very said good. it would be about a million. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Now, tonight's talent competition is about to begin. Usually, Kathy Lee and I introduce the 10 semifinalists to you. But on the occasion of this 75th anniversary, we've asked some of our former Miss Americas to do the honors. So let's meet our first special guest to get the competition underway, my good friend, the beautiful Phyllis George. Thank you, Kathy. The emotions of growing up are mirrored in the song, Woman in the Moon. Performing this reflection of tormented youth is tonight's first semifinalist, Miss Oklahoma, Chantel Smith. I was born as a child of 13 Not to act too strong Try to look like you belong But don't be Save your time and trouble Don't misbehave Grace didn't know you don't grow Overrun with rules Memorize your lines and rules It's directed As I long suspected They believe leave that strain For the word for me In Puccini's opera, La Boheme, Musetta uses all her feminine wiles to recapture the attentions of her former lover. Singing Quando Minvo Voletta is our second semifinalist, Miss Kansas, Amy Keller.
NBC's presentation of the 75th annual... Welcome back to the 75th annual Miss America pageant. Just ahead, the results of our national swimsuit vote. But now let's continue with our semi-finalist talent competition and our next very special guest. In 1851, composer Louis Moreau Gottschalk wrote a composition based on Spanish dances for his patron, Isabella of Spain. To play it for you now, tonight's third semi-finalist, Miss Massachusetts, Marcia Turner. relate to the deep feelings of love, especially as expressed by the works of the romantic composer Giacomo Puccini. From his lyrical opera La Rondine, here is the aria La Condone di Doretta, the song of Doretta, sung by tonight's fourth semifinalist, Miss New York, Helen Goldby.
And now, here's the word about heartburn. Tagamet HB. When I got a yeast infection, I called my doctor, and she told me something I never knew. She said, you can start using Monistat 7 cream right now to relieve the itching. I didn't know that. Turns out, the very same Monistat cream I use for a cure at night, I can also use for fast relief of external itching during the day. No wonder my doctor thinks so highly of it. Monistat, the number one choice of women, the number one recommendation of doctors. Another Charmin story, the double roll. On your left, Muffin is using a regular roll of toilet paper. And on your right, Boomer is using new Charmin double roll. It's two rolls in one. The point is, when Muffin's roll runs out, Boomer still has a whole extra roll ready to go. Because it has twice as many sheets. And it's softer, too. It's two rolls in one. New Charmin and Charmin Ultra double roll. In a moment, the 75th Annual Miss America pageant will continue. A beauty queen. Good luck on the next 75 years, Miss America. Welcome back to Atlantic City, everybody. A reminder that we'll be returning to the phone center in Omaha with the final results of tonight's swimsuit vote. But now, as our talent competition continues, let's meet our next special guest. Ice Cream is the delightful title of a song from the Broadway show, She Loves Me. And here to sing it is our fifth semifinalist, Miss Mississippi, Monica Lauren. I'm so sorry about last night. 
bitter, heartbroken, and finding inner strength to continue, best describes the character of Micaela from the opera Carmen. Performing the aria reflecting Micaela's struggle is our sixth semi-finalist, Miss Oregon, Emily Orton. controversy all part of our memories on tonight's 75th Miss America pageant. Anniversary. It's on the 75th anniversary of Miss America. Welcome back, everybody, to the 75th anniversary celebration from Convention Center in Atlantic City. We're coming to you live from coast to coast looking forward to the results of the National Swimsuit Vote. But now, to continue with our talent competition, please welcome our next special guest. Portraying Carmen, the tempestuous gypsy girl, here in a medley of songs from Bizet's famous, famous opera, is our seventh semifinalist, Miss Alabama, Lee Scherer.
Ballad, Think of Me, is sung by Christine, the story heroine. Tonight it is performed by our eighth semi-finalist, Miss California, Tiffany Stoker. of you watching tonight. Thank you. From all of us here in Atlantic City. For the first and only time the pageant. Just moments away, the results of our national swimsuit vote. But now let's continue with our semi-finalist talent competition and our next special guest. Leonard Bernstein's West Side Story captures the timeless message that love can transcend all prejudice. Here to sing the Broadway classic tonight is our ninth semi-finalist, Miss Illinois, Tracy Hayes.
great song is ageless and here with a new twist on can't help loving that man of mine is our 10th semifinalist miss arkansas paula montgomery
Linda Tana was absolutely fabulous tonight, really. That's the best I think I've ever seen yeah, since I'll 1984. Say. Wow. <laughs> well, that concludes tonight's 75th anniversary talent competition. Thanks to all of our beautiful former Miss Americas. It was so lovely to see them all together. It really was. And now, folks, the phone set is ready. Believe it or not, here it is. The decision we've all been waiting for. Do we see a swimsuit competition on our stage this evening, or is it history tonight? Steve Kometko, tell us, please, please what please. the American public has decided on this swimsuit competition. Please. please. I thought you'd never ask. Well, we've had nearly a million calls, a million votes registered. With me is Kelly Miles from the accounting firm of First and Young, LLP. She has the results and, from the envelope, uh, nearly a million calls. And by an overwhelming margin, four to one margin, the decision is to keep the swimsuit competition and project scoring will proceed as usual. Just for the record, 79% yes, 21% no. So that's it here from the phone center. I'd like to help thank all our help here tonight, our support staff, and thanks everybody for calling in to vote. And now, on with the show. Thank, Steve, thank very you much. very, very much. Uh, four to one of decisive margin. And a great turnout, too, nearly a million votes. We'll be returning for more of our 75th celebration in a moment. If I like new kind of fruit, fruit of the loom. And right after this Miss America classic moment. How high do you go on that thing? <laughs> what is the highest you've ever been? Well, I've never really measured it, but I don't imagine more than 20 or 25 feet. That looks look higher than that to me. I bet Ed McMahon's been higher than that. <laughs> well, anyway. Welcome back to the Convention Center in Atlantic City, where we're getting close to picking the next Miss America. We want to thank Steve for doing such a great job out there in Omaha. Here it is. Here's the way you voted for it. 79% of you said yes. 21% of you said no. Nearly a five to one mark. So here's our Miss America contestants and our 10 semifinalists competing in swimsuits.
Monica Lorenz, Miss Mississippi. Emily Orton, Miss Oregon. Miss California. When we return the exciting announcement of tonight's five finalists, on our way to crowning Miss America 1996. But first, Ultras, with new Ultra Color Care Conditioner, will let you feel the power of color from Claro, right after this classic Miss America moment. Susan, I'm going to ask you to turn and look at these words. Please, consider them for a moment and choose the one that you would like to discuss. All the big words. Huh? Which one do you like? Oh, I'm on your best. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that word is not on the panel, I don't think. Congratulations on the 75th anniversary of Miss America, and it just goes to show you don't have to be young to win the crown. You can be 75. Oh, you mean it's nearly 75. Oh, well, congratulations on that, too. We're here in Convention Center, celebrating the diamond anniversary of the Miss America pageant. The judges' votes are now being tallied, narrowing tonight's ten semifinalists down to the final five. Four of those young women will win generous scholarships, and one of them will receive a $40,000 scholarship and the coveted title of Miss America 1996. Now the question everybody's asking, of course, who will it be, Mr. Philbin? Before we reveal the names to you, they've come such a long way and they've done such a grand job. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our 10 semi-finalists. Chantel Smith, Miss Oklahoma. Amy Keller, Miss Kansas. Marcia Turner, Miss Massachusetts. Helen Goldsby, Miss New York. Monica Lurens, Miss Mississippi. Emily Orton, Miss Oregon. Lee Shara, Miss Alabama. 
Tiffany Stoker, Miss California. Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois. And Paula Montgomery, Miss Arkansas. All the best to all of you, ladies. Three. Would you please reveal the names of the top five finalists? Nobody can stand it any longer. All right, I've got the envelope right here with the results in my hand. So once again, in random order, they are... Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois. Chantel Smith, Miss Oklahoma. Tiffany Stoker, Miss California. Emily Orton, Miss Oregon. And Paula Montgomery, Miss Arkansas. To them. When we return, a chance for you and our judges to get to know our finalists and our last competition as they chat with Regis. All right, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, the part of the competition that I really enjoy, an opportunity to hear from our five finalists about their platform, the community service projects, and goals they're pursuing. Their answers are worth ten important and often decisive points. But before we get started, let's say hello to each one of these remarkable uh, young ladies and just get a little get acquainted question for you all. Congratulations, incidentally. Thank Terrific you. going. Uh, Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois. I is this experience, the Miss America competition, been everything that you thought it would be? Yes, it has. And actually, I think my committee really prepared me because as fun as it's been, it's also been a lot of hard work. And mm. they really prepared me for that. So I came knowing what to expect and paced myself. But uh -huh. it's been incredible. Very good. Chantel Smith, Miss Oklahoma. Um, when did your heart, did you really know that you wanted to be Miss America? Oh, I tell you what, I began um, pageants when I was a senior in high school and started watching the Miss America program on television then. Mm -hmm. So then, it's, uh, since then, it's always been a dream of mine. So I guess that's been about six years from now. Six years. And it's, once, it's a lifetime dream of mine, and I'm here, and I can't believe it. Uh, Tiffany uh, Stoker, Miss California. Uh, some young ladies go a year after year into pageants, hoping that they'll get to this stage in Atlantic City. Was this a, a long or a short trip for you? This was a short trip for me. It only took me one time at Miss California to become Miss California. And I decided that if I was going to do it, I was going to give it my best shot. And I only wanted to give it one shot, and I did it. Very good. And um, Emily Orton, Miss Oregon, you're from the smallest town here. Population? <laughs> 2,000. Are they all behind you tonight? It's incredible. I didn't know that there were that many people that knew who I was in that town, but when I got the crown of Miss Oregon, it was incredible how many people came out of the uh, woodwork. They do now, huh? And Paula Montgomery, Miss Arkansas, uh, is there anything about this whole experience uh, that has surprised you? Well, I'm sitting here, first of all, but no, I, I've always wanted to be Miss America since I was a little girl. Um, I want to say happy anniversary to my parents if I can, because it's their anniversary tonight. So happy anniversary. That's a great present for them, <laughs> believe me. All right, so it's great to know a little bit more about you. And now for your commitment to your community service. After I state your platform, I'll follow it up with a specific question about it. At Tracy Hayes, Miss Illinois, your platform is a focus on juvenile delinquency. Every week we see serious crimes being committed by young people. Is it time to prosecute more juvenile delinquents as adults? No, actually, I don't think we should. Uh, putting a child through an adult court is called a waiver, and we've seen an increase in that as people seem to think that in reaction to escalating juvenile crime, we should get tough on crime. Uh, my approach is the public health approach pioneered by C. Everett Coop in 1985. And what it is is focusing it, um, our energy on preventing the behavioral mod the behavior that leads to delinquency in the first place. So we need to focus our energy up front. When you put a child through an adult court, there's no room for rehabilitation. And if anything, the adult courts, courts are more lenient on juveniles because they're not used to seeing young children than the juvenile courts are. All right, thank you very much. Chantel Smith, Miss Oklahoma. Platform is um, 
School to work, the key to keeping kids in school. Another important problem. Yeah. A young person sees their educated parents lose their job. How do you convince that young person to stay in school in order to succeed? First of all, I think we're all responsible for ourselves, and we need to help young people instill within themselves that they are responsible with in themselves to receiving an education. And the program that I'm involved with, which is called School to Work, helps young people do just that. It teaches them to transition from school, from the classroom to today's high-tech workforce, and helps motivate them and inspire them that learning is good and learning will help them be productive adults instead of people that are on the welfare um, program. And it will just help our society as a whole become a greater nation. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Tiffany Stoker, Miss California. Your platform is a commitment to sexual abstinence. Here's a, here's a scenario. Your teenage brother is having a serious relationship. He's responsible and mature for his age. How do you sell him on abstinence? Well, what I have done when I go into the schools and youth groups, wherever I can talk to the youth, is I've developed an outline called Care for Teens, and it stands for Commitment to Abstinence, Responsibility, and Education. And I focus on all three areas, and I, I think that we really need to convince them to change their attitude towards sexual uh, activity. Uh, Robert Cole, he's a child psychiatrist from Harvard, he commented on sexual abstinence. He said, it took nearly three decades for social attitudes to harden against smoking, but when they did, millions of people who could never quit gave it up. And he said it will happen with sex, that it has to happen, because people want to live. Thank you very much. Emily Orton, Miss Oregon. Your platform is healing communities through mentorships. You've been mentoring a child in need when you discover your advice is in conflict with uh, his parents' beliefs. How do you handle that particular situation? It's not the beliefs that you bring into a mentoring situation. It's the love and the support that you bring along with you. You're not to put yourself onto that child in any way, shape, or form with how you think, but just give them the support they need to create their own ideas and have them think on their own. Mm -hmm. Are you a mentor, incidentally? I am a mentor, and I had a wonderful experience with a young girl last year. There's nothing that can compare to see a child grow that much because of something as simple as con unconditional love. Paula Montgomery, Miss Arkansas. Your platform is developing recognition and respect for seniors. The baby boomers will soon be senior citizens. As a person representing the younger generation, how do you bring these two generations together? Well, the first thing we need to do is realize that as a nation, we've lost respect for our senior citizens. Not only we have lost respect for them, but also senior citizens have lost respect for themselves. At, when they reach a certain age, they feel like they have to live an inactive lifestyle sometimes. And so what I've tried to do with my program, Young at Heart, is bring these two age groups together because they're facing a lot of the same issues, and sometimes they don't know that. Um, senior citizens have the highest rate of suicide in the nation. Some people would think it's teenagers, but it's not. And also alcoholism is a big problem with our senior citizens, and they can work together and face these issues, and it'll make it a lot better. All right, well, these are very worthy platforms, and good luck to all of you. Very bright, very lovely young ladies. I just don't know how the judges are going to decide this, but they seem to do it every year. And we'll be right back to crown Miss America 1996 in a moment. And now, correct, restore, and structurize damaged hair with the Leave-In You'll Believe In, Infusium 23 Leave-In Treatment. My hair was totally fried. Infusium made a difference like that. Infusium 23 leave-in treatment. It's the leave-in. We're back at Convention Center in Atlantic City, ready to bestow the title of Miss America on one of these five outstanding young women. Each judge has voted for the contestant he or she feels will be the best Miss America. And while the judges' votes are being tallied, we'd like you to make your decision at home. So for the last time, ladies and gentlemen, our final five. Miss Illinois, Tracy Hayes, a senior at Wheaton College. Her platform is juvenile delinquency, prevention, intervention, and rehabilitation. Miss Oklahoma, Chantel Smith, a graduate student at Oklahoma City University. Her platform is school to work education. Miss California, Tiffany Stoker, a senior at Brigham Young University. Her platform is commitment to sexual abstinence. Miss Oregon, Emily Orton, a junior at the University of Oregon. 
Her platform is mentoring programs. Miss Arkansas, Paula Montgomery, a senior at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Her platform is intergenerational programs. Brian Ford of Ernst & Young LLP has the answer we've all been waiting for. Here he is. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Here are the decisions by our distinguished judges. The fourth runner-up wins a $10,000 scholarship, and she is Miss Illinois, Tracy Hayes. <laughs> Third runner-up and winner of a $15,000 scholarship is Miss California, Tiffany Stoker. Second runner-up, winning a $20,000 scholarship is Miss Arkansas, Paula Montgomery. And that leaves Miss Oregon and Miss Oklahoma. One of you will win a $30,000 scholarship to continue your education. The other will win a $40,000 scholarship, plus the crown and the title of Miss America. In addition, the college or university that Miss America attends will also receive $25,000 for its scholarship fund from the Miss America organization and Waterford Crystal Reach. All right, are you ready, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of a $30,000 scholarship is Miss Oregon, Emily Orton. And Miss Oklahoma, Chantel Smith, is Miss America, 1996. Congratulations to Chantel Smith, Miss America, 1996. Until next year from Atlantic City. God Good night, bless everybody. You, everybody. furnished by Continental, whose award-winning one-pass frequent flyer program offers even more ways to earn free travel and upgrades. Continental, more airline for your money. NBC's presentation of the 75th Annual Miss America pageant has been sponsored in part by Infusium 23 Leave-In Treatment to correct, restore, and structurize damaged hair. And by Fruit You Can Wear, Fruit of the Loom, always in season.
someone who's heard that tune before, Leanza Cornette. Chantel, this is your very first interview it's as the new birthday. Miss America. Happy birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> this is like the best birthday present in the whole world. Anyone could ever dream of, yes. <laughs> Just minutes earlier, Chantel had been handed the Miss America crown. What a birthday present, and what a pageant. Tonight, America, you tell us what to do about the swimsuit competition. This year, the pageant let the public pick whether or not the swimsuit competition should be included. The answer was an overwhelming yes, and Chantel agreed. Oh, I'm for keeping swimsuit. I, I'm for it, definitely. I think the suit's modest enough that I don't feel like I'm compromising any beliefs, and, and it goes along with tradition and physical fitness, so I'm for keeping it. Chantel's selection as Miss America has special meaning. She was Miss Oklahoma, representing a state that was emotionally shattered after this year's tragic bombing. Chantel took that tragedy and made it her cause. What kind of hope does this bring your state that's had so much grief over the past year? Well, the message that I would like to send, because I have the opportunity now to speak to thousands and thousands of people, is thank you for all your support and all your prayers, because that truly helped our state make it through it. And we are still recovering, but thank you so much. Well, congratulations. We're real proud of you. I'm thank sure you. you wear the crown well all year long. Thanks, Leanza.